So I was presenting in a session that was focusing on the role of metabolism in cancer, in hematological malignancies, and we contributed to the session by telling how the immunoglobulin receptor, which is expressed on the surface of all B cell tumors, controls metabolism in, in the malignant cells. Uh, so we basically start our story with using animal models where we inactivate the B cell receptor genetically and try to understand what happens to the tumors when you inhibit the receptor. And, and this is relevant from a clinical point of view because there are drugs that are being actually currently used in the clinics that inhibit the B-cell receptor signaling pathway. So what we discovered through the animal models is that actually the immunoglobulin participates in a fundamental way in the control of tumor cell metabolism. And when the cells lose the B-cell receptor, and this could be happening, for example, when you inhibit functionally the receptor to drugs, the cells learn how to adapt to this mechanism, to this, to this treatment, and, and they use alternative ways to actually survive. So the message is that these drugs are effective, but resistance can occur. These resistance are associated with changes in the metabolic profile of the tumor cells. And our animal model is helping us to understand how we can actually target these this, this, this resistances and actually identify new ways through which we can inhibit the growth of these cells. So first we are actually identifying molecular targets, so genes and proteins that are actually responsible for the resistance to these drugs and then eventually develop drugs if they are not already available. Yeah, so actually what we are currently doing is a, sc a large-scale screening on these resistant cells, so cells that are resistant to the current drugs, and we are focusing particularly on FDA-approved drugs so that if we find any drug that would hit the cells and kill them, we could immediately start clinical trial without the need of all the development phase. I, I think this, this model that started you know, as a preclinical investigation has actually built up and, and has raised attention in a number of pathologists around us. We're actually trying now to figure out which patient could resist to the drug before actually giving the drug to the patient. So I, I believe that these this preclinical models are actually extremely useful to stratify better the patients that actually get ibrutinib or idelalizib. Right, so we need biomarkers to identify those and, 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 and actually these this preclinical models are helping us to identify those biomarkers in a, in a way that we could actually personalize the treatment as much as we can. Yeah, so it's actually a combination of metabolomic data, transcriptomic data, genomic data, so it's really omics coming into play and the difficulty is actually integrating all this information to try to find the right hits that we can actually exploit for overcoming these resistances.